Okay, so we have built some plugins for Pentaco Kettle that allow you to produce RDF. Um, we had a large SQL database and we wanted to use Pentaho to clean up the data and export it. And for us, we wanted to export it as RDF. So if we open up Pentaho Kettle, um, this is what we see. Now our plugins that we've built, we had to install first and these reside um, within Pentaho's directory. So we've installed Pentaho to see data integration. There's a plugins folder. And if we look here, there is a folder called Kettle Jenner plugins. Now these contain our open source plugins that you can also use. Okay. So if we go back to Pentaho here and uh, we try to create a new transformation, what we'll see is in the steps that are possible on the left hand side here, in the transform step, there's now a step called create Jenna model. And in the output steps, there's a step called serialize Jenna model. Okay. We're going to make use of these two steps that we've built in our custom plugins to create RDF from a SQL database. So let's start with uh, a SQL table as input. Okay, and uh, we have to configure the database. So come over to this dialog. And uh, we have a SQL Server database installed here somewhere. Let's see, uh, Microsoft SQL Server for us. Um, it's on my laptop. Uh, that's our database name. And we're going to use integrated security. And uh, let's just make sure that works. Oh, I have to give the connection a name. Let's just call it my database. Okay, so we can connect to the database from Pento. Um, and then obviously we're going to need some SQL to uh, extract the data from the database. So I've got some that I've pre-baked uh, from earlier. So rather than write this out by hand, I'm just going to copy and paste it. So pop this into uh, Pento. And we can say, okay, so this is uh, our input step from our SQL Server database. If we open that up, we'll see that there we are. There's the SQL that it's going to run. Okay. Um, the next thing that we need to do is we need to create a URL for each resource that we want to export from the, from the database because in RDF, um, every resource has a URL. Now Pentaho works um, on a row based model. So for each row that we produce in the database, we will create a new RDF resource. So let's think about how we might um, give that RDF resource a URL. Okay, so we're going to add a constant um, value that's going to form the base of our URI. Now in Pentaho, you can find this in the transform, so add constants. And if we open that up, uh, we're just going to give it a name for the field, which is going to hold our constant. So we'll call it um, URI prefix. And um, the value um, can be anything you want, but it's the prefix of our URL. So for us, this would be something like uh, HTTP, um, mycompany.com. Um, and the things that we're exporting in this instance are um, information about departments. So we might start our URI something like department underscore, and then an identifier for each department. Now this is just the prefix, so we don't need the identifier yet. That's going to come from the database. So um, that's all we need here. So we can say, okay. Oh, and let's call this something simple, like set uh, URI prefix. So we can recognize it. <coughs> okay, now we're going to uh, connect these steps together. So from the table input, we're going to uh, add our row, our column for each row with our URI prefix in, and that column is called URI prefix. Um, but that's that's not very helpful. Um, we actually want to um, append the identifier for each. Uh, department that we're exporting to the prefix to give us a full URI. And so we have to concatenate. Um, okay, 
Now we're going to um, concatenate our field from the database uh, with our URI prefix constant. So um, we'll connect these together so that the data um, flows through here. And we'll take our URI prefix field, uh, our constant familiar, um, which is uh, a string and we'll concatenate it with a field from the database and we can just ask for all the database fields okay um, but the one that we're actually interested in is this letter code one so we can go ahead and um, remove the others so let's do that um, there we go we've removed those um, the letter code itself, we don't want it to have a fixed length of four characters. We just want it to be as long as it is. And um, these we don't need either. And we should give the step a sensible name like uh, create resource URI. And the URI that's created by concatenating these needs to go into an output field. So we'll just call that resource URI. Okay. Great. So uh, we have some input, and for each row, we're creating a URI. And now what we should do is take each row and convert it into a Jenna model. So let's add the Jenna model step, and uh, we'll connect its input to the data that's flowing free. And we open up Jenna model. And for each row, we have to uh, put the model into another field. So we'll just call that Jenna model for simplicity. Uh, we have to choose a type for our RDF resource. Um, for us, it's a premise intellectual entity. And I have to uh, define the premise namespace. So I'm not going to use the real one. I'm just going to use something simple uh, for the purposes of this demo. OK. And um, the URI that we concatenated together earlier, uh, we want to be the URI of each resource. So we need to select that. Uh, so we chose the field resource URI. That's what we named our concatenated URI earlier. And then this part is the most interesting. So this is mappings from fields in the database rows to RDF properties. And um, again, we can click fields and it brings in all the fields that are available from our steps. Um, but we're actually only going to export a couple of these um, because it's just a simple demo. So I'm not going to show you uh, some complicated data. So let's get rid of some of these. Um, so we might have the letter code itself. Um, the previous data ID Database ID might be our Dublin Core identifier, DC identifier. Uh, the title um, might be a Dublin Core title. And uh, of course, I should define the Dublin Core namespace. Uh, again, I'm just going to use a fake simple namespace. Um, and the letter code, um, that might be uh, the subject, let's say. It's uh, more of an identifier, but the subject is fine for this. Now, in this box here, we can choose the RDF data type for our field, and this will do some basic conversion for us. But um, we're just going to stick with the default for RDF, which is to not specify the type, um, which means that it will be a string. Okay, so we can then save that. Okay, so we've taken our table input from the database. We've constructed a URI for each row. And then we've constructed a Jenna model from each row with its URI. Um, but at the moment, this is all in memory. So ideally, what we want to do is write this to a file on disk. And this is where our output step comes in. So we find our serialized Jenna model step. And we connect its input to the output of the Jenna model, hopefully. And we have to set some properties. So previously, we stored the Jenna model in a field called Jenna model. Um, I personally prefer the turtle output format, but other output formats for RDF here are available. 
and we have to set a file uh, on the hard disk that we're going to write this uh, RDF data into. So let's just call this demo. Okay, now we can save that. Um, and then we can attempt to run our transformation from SQL uh, out to RDF. So let's run that and see what happens. To save that. Okay, and the transformation is completed. And from our log down here, we can see that uh, 452 fields were read in and um, serialized out were 452 fields. So hopefully we have all the data from our database. So let's look at our RDF file. This is just uh, Oxygen. It's a very fancy text editor. Um, and we saved it to temp. And we have a demo turtle file. And let's open that up. And we'll just say that it's a text file for now. And we can see that we have some RDF that we've produced. Uh, so here's our URIs that we constructed uh, for each resource. Um, our Dublin Core identifier, Dublin Core subject, and our Dublin Core title. And then there's another resource and another resource. So we exported each row um, as an RDF resource. Now, obviously this is quite a simple example, uh, but you can have much more complicated transformations. So here's one that we built earlier. Um, this has many more steps in it that do clean up and construct um, additional fields, but ultimately we start with a database and we serialize to RDF.